Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here with something with a little a little different today because I had questions and I had um, a friend say she was interested in this stuff. I need to move this up higher. And so I thought, well, I will do a little comparison video. So as many, uh, many of you know who've been watching my videos all along that I really like working with vellum. So I took a stab in the dark, I don't know, a year or two ago, and bought me some vellum. Where is it? I didn't bring it over. Uno momento. Okay, um, this is the vellum that I bought. I don't know, it, it's probably been a year and a half, two years since I bought it. This is the brand, sorry the dog wants in and I'm not letting him in. Um, this says translucent paper to stamp, stamp, emboss, die cut, journal, and collage. It says nothing about watercolor. <laughs> 24 pound clear, 12 sheets, 8.5 by 11, acid free. And I think the, the company's name is Graphics. So I bought this. And if any of you saw the, uh, the shaped vellum that I had where I made the, fla the little flowers, um, this is what I made it out of. So my friend and I were talking about vellum, and she's getting into watercolor, and I said, ah, vellum does not do well on watercolor um, with wet. It does great with a lot of stuff, but if you're going to do watercolor, you have to let it dry for hours and hours and hours, or you have to use a hairdryer, not a heat gun, because the heat gun basically ripples the vellum unless you're looking for that kind of uh, texture which I was not um, the heat gun will cause it to melt and ripple and it'll look really weird so here's the forms that I used in that other video with the flowers and I did save it vellum is really great for paper piercing um, it's also good for embossing and but I emboss a different way I it's not I did not emboss on a die cut machine I take my um, stylus tools and I emboss with stencils. I put a stencil over the vellum and then I take the embossing tool, which is right here. One of the Martha Stewart set of three. It doesn't really matter the brand, but I'm just saying that in case somebody's looking for it. And I've had it so long that the uh, brand name has worn off. So I lay this down on fun foam, like two or three layers of it. you got to be very careful because... This stuff is only 24 pounds, so it's very thin. It does not take pressure very well. So you have to lightly do it. So I just take it, you know, and color in like this with different size of embossing tools and um, make, you know, that kind of stuff, which I really like doing. All right, so that's that embossing paper. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I did buy it off of Amazon, so you can go look for the graphics brand on Amazon and find it there. Okay, so wanting to use paper that's more sturdy, vellum that's more sturdy, I just recently ordered this off of Amazon. Sorry about the glare. We're having a rainy dark day and I have to turn every light on in here to get this. Um, this is a 100 GSM smooth surface, no bleed through, stable and strong. It's good. For, it says here it's good for sketching, tracing, drawing, invitations, overlays and inserts, photo overlays, wraps and gate folds. I don't know what that is. Place, uh, place cards and tags and I got 50 sheets that are eight and a half by 11 and you'll understand why I'm telling you the size. So this is a thicker vellum. That's what's taped right here. And the brand is uh, Dalzabel. <laughs> I'm not really sure how you say it, Dalzabel. I don't know. It says it's good for, it, it can be used in laser and ink jets. And I did get this off of Amazon also. And they give you a thing where you can reply to them and ask them questions about their vellum. Made in the PRC. I know it's Chinese, but I'm not sure what PR is. Republic of China something. Ba, 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 Republic of China. I bet you anything that's what the RC is. Anyway, so I ordered this. <clears throat> There's a million different 
<clears throat> excuse me, there's a million different kinds of um, vellum. You can get them thick, very papery, wispy, thin. But I liked this. All right, so when I got it, I sat down with several different pens and um, did that. Was it a semic writing? So this is the RZ, R2 Rollerball. These are the ones that are a dollar a pen at Dollar Tree, which probably won't be a dollar much longer at the rate they're going. Um, this is Stedler 0.05, uh, like, you know, like the Micron. It's the fiber tip nib things. This is a Jelly Roll pen number eight. Um, I had tens, but I think I used them up, and now I have mostly eights, and I think I might have a couple sixes in there somewhere. Worked great, but I'll, the only one you didn't have to let dry was basically the uh, nib thing. This one is not good with water. If you add water to it, will it will smear. This is the uh, R2 Rollerball, and it says on there it's not waterproof. All right, this is like a micron pen. You didn't have to wait very long for it to dry. This takes a long time to dry. The jelly roll, if you have you apply it or you color in solid on it, it'll take a long time to dry, as does watercolor, which is a whole different can of worms. Then I use the Signo Uniball white pen, and I think it looks really good on here. Mine's a little skippy, but I like the way it looks. Then this one is a black Posca. It was this pen right here, which is fast running out of paint. And it works okay, but again, it's acrylic paint, so you have to let it dry. And the bottom one that's really hard to see is pink. Well, my hand up there is not helping. Uh, I don't have anything. Well, maybe. No, I don't have anything I can put over it for you to see under it. Oh, let's try this. No, let's don't do pink paper. Let's try this. Can you see it any better? Oh, a teeny bit. Anyway, the light's not helping. All right, so let me show you what I use. This is pink. Take my word for it. <laughs> I use this pen right here. These are the uh, Unibarl Signo colored pens. What do they call these things? Misabiji Pencil Company LTD. This is called Signo Angelic Color. And this is pink. That's all it says on there. And the rest is in Japanese. Okay. Anyway, so again, this is kind of like a jelly roll pen. And you have to let it dry. But it doesn't show up very well on the paper, both in camera and in person. As, well, it does if you do it on white. How about let's do it over here. If you do it on white, it shows up a little better. Uh, on, on the black background, you can barely see it. It's crazy. So if you're going to write with these where you're going to have it with a dark color underneath it, you might want to use some of the neon pens, which I think will show up a lot better. All right, so there's the um, the lightweight. I mean, this is the lightweight. Neat, neat. This is the new vellum paper. That's this stuff right here I used. All right, so now I want to try some other things on here. I'm not going to do watercolor because honestly it just takes too stinking long for it to dry for me. I don't have the patience for that. All right, so I'm going to try the Silky Water Soluble Crayons from Creative Inspirations. This is, does it have a color name? Of course not. Ooh. So this is the blue. Wow, that's very creamy on that. Let's do a uh, green. You know, I got to do green on here. I can't skip the green. Oh, that's, oh, that feels fabulous. It's like floating on air. All right, so let me see. I got this as a gift on a trip and when I went to Austin with my friends, and I just love my kitty because my kitty holds all my sponges. All right, let's see. Do I have one of the fat sponges in here? Nope. All right, so I'm just going to take a sponge, and it's a little dirty, but it's not going to affect it. So I'm going to take the sponge, and I'm going to, Rub it around, and it does not, these crayons are water soluble. They're not meant to have, you know, not to, really to be meant to be rubbed by a sponge. It does spread out a teeny bit, but like I said, it's water soluble. So that takes a lot of work, and you probably don't want to use these. I said I wasn't going to use water on them, but I got a little water left in my can tell. 
All right, so there's the water business. See how it beads up and it makes those funky little trails? And you're going to see the little lines in here. Look at that. These crayons work really well. Wow, they're really nice crayons. And they're, they're not a you know, good huge name brand, but they work really well on the vellum. I'm so surprised. Okay, so there's that. Then let's try, what do I have here? Let's try, um, this is, um, I think, what are these? Rainbow Creations. Oh, okay, I bought these in some discount store. Watercolor brushes do well on it, but again, you're gonna have to let them dry for a little bit, but they won't take as long as actual watercolor. There's the green. That looks really good. Okay, so there's those. All right, and then I have, these are watercolor, uh, these are watercolor pencils. Creative Mark, Cezanne watercolor pencils, All right? And watercolor pencils on vellum do really well. Color pencils do even better. So there's the green, uh, green, and here's the blue. And let me, where'd I put it? I just had the brush in my hand. <laughs> what happened to it? Oh my gosh, I was going to use it, and now I don't know what I did with the darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, oh, there it is. I put it away. <laughs> well, novel comes that. All right, here's the blue. Sorry. The camera was full, and I had to transfer everything over to the SIN card, so. All right, so I while I was waiting, I was thinking about all the things I could throw at this vellum. This is already basically dry and it was like less than five minutes. All right, so here is the green with the water brush. Now you're not gonna get great coverage with it and it's not bad. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not the greatest thing to use. All right, so now here I'm gonna use, I'm gonna hang with my green and blue theme. I don't know how I got, st I got started. All right, so this is a Sharpie. Look how bright, bright and vibrant that is. Just regular Sharpie markers, nothing special. If you can endure the smell, they work really well on vellum. As a matter of fact, other than um, colored pencils and watercolor brushes and Sharpies, those are my three preferred ways to use vellum for art. Um, yes, you can use Poscas. It's a little tough on the old nibs. Might be the Posca, I'm not sure. Oh, do I have a dark green? Oh, yeah, here we go. Let me shake this up, boy. Put it on there. All right, green. Yeah, it's a little tougher on the... <clears throat> Excuse me, the nibs. All right, so what else is I going to throw at this? Okay, um, I bought these at a show, but you can buy these at Hobby Lobby. And they're, they're, they're like triangle-shaped pens. They're, they're um, markers of a sort. Once you get it started, it does okay. I I don't think it's worth the money to use the coverage for one of these markers uh, markers because the nibs are, are the pit points are very small, and it would take you forever and nearly a whole marker to cover up any kind of fill in space. This one's a little older, and I've used the green a little more, so it's um been well loved. So that doesn't. I would not recommend these things for vellum. All right, what else have I got here? 
All right, so these are, somebody gifted these to me, crayons, the, um, what do they call them? Twistable. Okay, so let me do the, green, the blue up here. These work really well, although it would take you a while to cover in a large space with them. They'd be great for small art. Let me do this, because we're going to hang with the green and the blue. There you go. So these work. Most anything works on vellum if you have the patience to endure, but be prepared. Um, let me show you what happens with the water. Oh, I'm going to show you neon markers. Okay, so these two were water. This was water. Had a little more water probably than this. But can you see they're buckled? This is buckled. This is buckled. This is not as much. And it depends on how much water that you put on something as to how wrinkly. Now, if you like wrinkly paper, watercolor is your, your, your way to go. Um, I don't happen to like that kind of thing. Here is a jelly roll pen. Oh, nope, we don't want to use that. We're doing green and blue. But I don't, not sure if I have neon colors in green and blue. Let's try. Ooh, my husband's frying bacon. I can smell it. All right, so here's blue. These are, these are basically good for outlining. They're really not good for coloring in. And the neons, the, what do they call them, moonlights? What does this say? It says nothing. <laughs> of course not. Ugh. Anyway, so these, uh, I think the moonlight ones, which, is this one a moonlight? Shoot, none of them are, none of them say. All right, so I'm going to use the orange here. Anything that's neon colored always looks really good on vellum but it's only good for things like like you know small drawing type stuff and little marks here there and yonder and little color ends because they just don't take the slickness of the vellum very well okay so there's that if I got anything else I can throw at it what else um let's see I have these markers here, and I'm not really sure. These are artisan markers, and I guess they're like Posca's. I don't use these very often. Oh, see, look, brand spanking new. All right, peeps. You see it live. <laughs> it's not going to bump and bump and bump and bump. Okay, so we don't have time for that foolishness now. Have I used any of these others? I don't even know if I've used these yet. Oh, there's a yellow one. All right. Nope, would not recommend these for vellum because it's skippy and blotchy, and you're not getting, even if I shake it up, I doubt seriously. It's going to work. Okay, so there's that. So that's not a great idea. All right, um, let's try... Arteza ink pens. Not bad. The color's good. But again, I would only use it for small projects like doodling. I would not use it for anything where you need to color in. I don't think these are that kind of pen. Blue. Ah. Yeah, they're pretty consistent. I'm not a fan of these these um, pens. I do like the Jelly Rolls much better. I think the ball is more enduring. These are probably better for writing on paper. Real cotton paper instead of plastic. Okay, so here's this one. Let me take this up and I'm going to throw a curveball here. So I have collected all kinds of vellum-ish type-esque papers. And I discovered something that I think my age will tell. All right, so there's all the samples from that. And see the water ones, how they're buckly? You don't really want to use copious amounts of water. All right, so if you take a look at the back side, the best ones are the Sharpies and the watercolors. Like 
these are okay, but the color's not pronounced. It's very muted. This is not as good as it could be. Let's see? There you go. All right. Um, so this is something that I bought a while ago, and this is these are nine by twelve inch sheets, and you waste a lot of them. My printer only does eight and a half by eleven, as many people's does. So this is Master's Touch Premium Tracing Pad, forty five pound. Acid free, 9 by 12, made in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oh, no, wait, it's made in China, distributed by Master Touch Fine Art Studio in Oklahoma City. All right, so it says pen and ink. So let me show you this. Let me get one sheet out of here. <coughs> All right, does this look familiar? Uh, yeah, it should, because this is the exact same stuff as vellum. Look at that. Uh, this is crazy. This is tracing paper. This is vellum. <coughs> and, excuse me, as far as I'm concerned, if you cannot afford to buy vellum, you can buy tracing paper. Same thing. Now, not all tracing papers are created equal. There's some tracing papers that do not feel like vellum. They feel more like paper, but this feels exactly like vellum. And to prove my point, let me show you this. Oops, let me pull this out because I can't get back in. Oh, there's no cardboard on the back. None of them have it. Oh, this one does. I mm, can't use that. Hang on a second. Let me get a piece of... Um, cardboard. Okay, I got fun foam. So this is the tracing paper that is 45 pounds. So to prove my point that this is just like vellum, watch this. Uh, look familiar. So this is vellum. This is tracing paper. Oh my, look familiar? <laughs> okay, so that proves my point that um, a lot of tracing paper is almost exactly like vellum. So let me go get some more tracing paper. All right, this is to my point that all, not all tracing paper is created equal. This is uh, Strathmore tracing paper. There were 50 sheets, they're 25 pounds, they're 9 by 12, okay? So this was tracing paper, premium tracing paper from Master's Touch. Premium tracing paper from Master's Touch. Strathmore tracing paper. It's in there kind of tight. Did I get one or two sheets? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. This is tracing paper. This is not a vellum esque paper. you see the difference? Quite a difference, isn't it? They're talking about this being a premium tracing paper, which is like vellum. This is tracing paper, which is nothing like vellum. Jelly roll. Sharpie. Oh, 
Pasca. All right, this is going to involve water, so don't get squeamish. Nice and creamy. These crayons are so creamy. It'll involve water if I can remember where I put the pen. Okay, water. These are water soluble markers. And already it's buckling. And this is not just a little buckle, this is a lot. There's this one. What else should I use? Oh, let's use a, a, a Stadler. Not good. I uh, cannot get it to write. It does better on vellum. Doesn't matter which side you do it on. Uh, you see nothing, I see nothing. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's see, what else can we throw at this? All right, let's do the Arteza pens. Again, they write. But it's not good coverage. It's it's only meant for like outlining, and it is a bit skippy because this paper is a little bit textured. It's got a little tooth to it, not much, but it's got just enough to throw these off. I listen. I am not a fan of these pens, so sorry. Um, what else can we try? Let's try this. These are little triangle things, markers from Hobby Lobby. Guess what? No can write. No can write. But, let me say this, there is a toothy side and then there's a slick side and it doesn't really matter because it, it, some of the stuff's just going to be skippy. All right, so let me put something underneath here I can trace. All right, so here is the vellum. Can you see the vellum word through there? Excellent, right? Jelly Roll does pretty well on it. Okay, so that works well. Let's turn it over and try this side. Jelly Rolls love this paper. I'm not trying to color it in solid, but it does a good job anyway. All right, so certain papers are only good for certain mediums. Not all of them will work. Um, depends on what you're using. Oh, guess what? Not gonna work. It's so sad because these are lovely pens. Let's see, maybe it's dried out. Oh no, it's not. Fine nibs on this does not work. Look at that, it's gold. Barely works on the paper. Let's try the other side. Absolutely not. Okay, so we know that's not going to be a winner. Um, I'm thinking that any crayon type thing will work. Uh, let's do these guys here. Sharpies. Good for coloring solid spaces. You know, if you need to color in something like this, it works really well for that. There you go. And the colors stay pretty good. That looks good. All right, and the other side. Other side's got more tooth to it. And the Sharpies do just fine. And, but, all right, so let me show you the downside. You cannot use, look at the difference. This is the right side. This is the opposite side. I turn it over and see it's cloudy looking. So before you start a project and get disappointed, take a piece of paper out of the pack and play with it to see what it does before you're very upset 
Watercolor uh, pens do great. Brush pens. On both sides. Oh yeah, this stuff works here. Although the color is a little more muted. Let me try a darker color and see if that works. Well, can I find one? No! What is this? The dark blue. Okay, so here we have one side. Ooh. All right, that's a blue. And it leaves lines. It's wet. I don't know what it'll be like when it dries. There's that one. And then flip it over to this side. Much better on the on the non-toothy side, this, the smooth side. This is the tooth on the opposite side. This is a smooth side. So there you go. Um, it just depends on what you plan on using. Uh, you may have to put some kind of a cushiony thing underneath it. Oh, there you go. But it tears up the paper if you press too hard. Yeah, I got a little bumps here that look like, I don't know, maybe the pen's doing blobs. Just don't press down really hard because this is, you know, a cushy surface. Let's turn it the other side. This is... Okay, so again, this is good for outlining, doodling, not coloring in. I wouldn't suggest doing a lot of wetness on this because I just don't think these are good for wetness. The only thing I have not tried on here yet is colored pencils. All right, so let me do this on a hard surface. Yep, colored pencils do really well. Oh, this is the toothy side, so you're going to see white in between. Uh, you know, it's going to look white and colored on this side. Oh, and this side's just as toothy as the other side can, where a colored pencil is concerned. All right, so there you go. There's all kinds of different papers for all kinds of different tasks. If you buy new paper, you really should try different brands of the same type of paper. Like um, this is one kind of vellum. And this is a thicker, this is the thicker vellum, which I think is probably a better quality vellum than this vellum. But they basically both do the same thing. They don't like water, but they like most everything you throw at it, but not a lot of wetness. That's not what they're good for. Um, they will wrinkle. So if you're a smooth person, no water. And then tracing paper. This is a tracing paper. And then this is a tracing paper and they are absolutely not the same type of paper. Um, this is more like a vellum and this is the Strathmore tracing paper. I left the, um, I put the fronts of the tablets in here so I can remember the brands because I, I file all my papers, I put them all on these job tickets from um, Amazon and then I put the, up here tracing paper because I file them in alphabetical order and make sure that when I do that way all my tracing papers together, all my vellum paper and UPO papers are together in alphabetical order. That way if I want to do comparison like I've done today, I can take all the tracing papers out together. So there's that one. And then Here's another tracing paper, and again, I took the front off and put it on here so I remember the brand name. And look, you really can see there's a distinct difference. So buy two or three different kinds of tracing paper and try them out before you ruin a project. <laughs> I'm speaking from the voice of experience. Okay, I hope this helps everybody today with um, a little comparison of tracing paper versus vellum, and then tracing paper versus tracing paper. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you in the